Welcome to this very short yet very important PowerPoint video presentation. The title is Is Daniel 11 40 through 45 a salvational subject to understand? The purpose for this video is because some of our people are now going around saying that the last five verses of Daniel 11, especially verse 45, that lead up to the close of probation and second coming of Christ are not salvational. Is this true? What are we counseled about these verses? These questions will be answered in this video presentation. Now we're going to go into our prayer. Dear Lord in heaven, please be with us now as we talk about this subject that has been presented and we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us as we open up your word to look at some verses we ask for the presence of your holy angels and the Holy Spirit to give us understanding please forgive us of our sins and be with us now in Jesus name I pray these things amen number one if we don't understand these verses in Daniel 11 40 through 45 especially verse 45 Christ will come to us as a thief in the night and I'll be showing you the proof how that is the term thief in the night refers to being unprepared for the second coming of Christ watch therefore for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come but know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So here we see watch is mentioned several times, um, and we're going to find out what event we've been told to watch to know probation on the world is about to be over and Christ is about to come. We'll be learning that in a um, little bit in the video. So this is Matthew 24, verse 42 through 44. So watching is connected so that Christ won't be come to us as a thief in the night. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5. 2 and 4. If you're in darkness, Christ is going to come to you as a thief. If you're not in darkness, he will not come to you as a thief in the night. So we're going to learn what does that mean. How are we in darkness and how do we keep from being in darkness and keep Christ coming to us as a thief in the night? Question. How do we prevent Christ coming to us as a thief in the night? Satan will seek to divert the minds of those who should be established, strengthened, and settled in the truths of the first, second, and third angel's messages. The students in our schools should carefully study Daniel and the Revelation so that they shall not be left in darkness and the day of Christ overtake them as a thief in the night. I speak of this book because it is a means of educating those who need to understand the truth of the word. This book should be highly appreciated. First manuscript release, page 63, paragraph 4. And notice she wrote that in 1901. Not just the students, but every one of us are supposed to read this. If you read first manuscript release, pages 60 to 63. We're to study Daniel and Revelation so that we won't be in darkness. If we do not study this book, then we will be in darkness. And the day of Christ will overtake us as a thief in the night. And I'm not referring to those who don't have access to this book and have never heard of it. I'm referring to those who've heard of it, learned how to get access, but still refuse to read and study this book. Okay? It is a means of educating those who need to understand the truth of the word, and this book is to be highly appreciated. 
not belittled, brothers and sisters, but highly appreciated. Why this book? The interest in Daniel and the Revelation is to continue as long as probationary time shall last. God used the author of this book, which is Uriah Smith, as a channel through which to communicate light to direct minds to the truth, not error. Shall we not appreciate this light, which points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King? First Manuscript Releases, page 63, paragraph 1, written in 1901. According to Jesus through the prophet, this book is light, not darkness. Interest in it is to continue as long as probationary time lasts. And that this, we're to highly appreciate this book or appreciate this book. And it points to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King. The events and signs connected to his second coming are clearly presented in this book, brothers and sisters. Question. Where in Uriah's book does he point to the coming of Christ? Daniel 11, verses 45 to chapter 12, verse 1, and Revelation 16. We are told in the following quote, I knew the time was short, that the scenes which are soon to crowd upon us would at the last come very suddenly and swiftly. As represented in the words of Scripture, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Cole Porter Ministry, 127, paragraph 3. Number 2. We are to understand the progress of events in the marshalling of the nations. We are to understand the progress of events in the marching of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. Last Day Events, page 15, paragraph 2, also found in Testimonies, volume 8, page 307, and this was written in 1904. And notice here, brothers and sisters, for the final conflict of the great controversy does not only include the papacy, but many nations. Okay, and remember the papacy is going to receive plagues. We're, we'll be learning that in the future. But nations are all coming together. All kinds of conflict is going to wreak havoc all over this earth. So the nations in the end are also events that we should be looking at to see a fulfillment of probation being closed. See, Marshalling of the Nations by A.T. Jones. This is an article that he wrote. It's in the Pioneer section of the CD-ROM. If you go to the Pioneer section, click the large binoculars on the far left side. A query box will pop up. In quotation marks, put marshalling of the nations. Not apostrophes, but quotation marks. And you, may be, you might find this document in the first and second hits in the Pioneer section of the LNG White CD-ROM. Here is the actual link to this article, so you could copy and paste it. Thus the very powers concerned in this Turkish affair are the powers that are now turning to their attention to the dividing up of China, and so are become the kings of the east. And in all this, these mighty nations are simply stepping into their places in the marshalling of the nations for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, Turkey is going to be involved in the marshalling of the nations, according to A.T. Jones's paper. We're counseled to read this and share it. Let us plan for it, work for it, pray for it. Let, it. let a plea be brought before the general conference now assembled for means for the special end. The distribution of papers as signs of the times and the sentinel of liberty for tracts to be sold and given away as marshalling of the nations. April 21st, 1901, General Conference Bulletin, page 357, paragraph 6. Brothers and sisters, after A.T. Jones did his paper at the General Conference session in April of 1901, it was urged to for the people at that General Conference session to give money to go for the means of distributing this specific track, Marshalling of the Nations. 
Something came over me that said, let him know that he was your prisoner, and I finally brought an incident to his mind that showed him that I was the man who had him in charge. The man immediately arose to his feet, stepped up to me, and took my hand in both of his. Well, said he, Brother Corliss, you treated me well anyway, and I want to thank you now for capturing me again by bringing the truth to me. Well, it was a hearty reception, and I want to tell you, brethren, that when those southern veterans meet in that reunion, there will be the hearty handshake and nothing but the best of feelings. And if they can have such matter presented before them as marshalling of the nations, it seems to me as if they would receive it cordially. Moreover, it will be one of the grandest occasions that this people have ever had of reaching the best minds in the South. April 21st, 1901, General Conference Bulletin, page 357, paragraphs 15 and 16. So here in the presence of Brother Corliss was a man who used to be in charge of Brother Corliss during the days of the Civil War, 1861 to 1865. Okay, Brother Corliss treated him very kindly, and because of that, here we have... 36 years later, in 1901, this man is willing to listen to and read any material that Brother Corliss gave him. And he, he said if the people had marshalling of the nations, that particular tract slash paper, many would cordially accept the truth. Because the events going on in their day was taking place, and these events are going to be repeated right before Christ comes. Because... Christ said at that time, Woe, woe, woe. Hold, 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 I should say. Hold, hold, hold. So the winds did not come down yet. They were not loose. The marshalling of the nations includes the Eastern question. Here's a link to Uriah Smith's correct, the, the link to Uriah Smith's correct Daniel and the Revelation 1897 edition. If you click that link, go to the above link and type in page number 333 at the top on the PDF. Go to the very top. This will take you to Daniel 1145, which you'll find at the bottom of the page. Read pages 333 to 339 of the PDF not the actual book. There's page numbers on the actual pages and then there's PDF pages at the top when you click that link. I'm referring to the PDF pages. Also go to www.egwwritings.org When you get there type in Eastern Question in the top left search bar and look at all seven hits especially numbers five through seven. You, so you want to put quotation marks when you get there. Note, anything connected to the events pointing to the close of probation and the second coming of Christ is of a salvational nature. If we read Uriah Smith's correct 1897 edition, which points to the events leading straight up to Christ's second coming, he won't come to us as a thief in the night. Also, Brother Haskell tells us that the events going on in Turkey lets us know when our high priest's work in the most holy place is almost over. Note, many are saying that when Sunday is enforced, probation has closed. This is partially false. Now, it will have closed for most Seventh-day Adventists at that time, but it will not have closed for the world just yet. Remember, there will be a time of no buy, no sell when Sunday is enforced. Probation at that time has not yet closed. They will still have a little time left. If we tell them about Turkey now and how Turkey will leave Constantinople, and set up its headquarters in Jerusalem, and that probation on the world will close at that time, many in the world will believe we have the truth because we prophesied to them a future event. And they will accept the Sabbath over Sunday. And remember, 
Christ said he tells us things before they come to pass. So when they do come to pass, we might believe John 14, 29. And this is also to show Adventists, because if Christ leaving, the, if Turkey leaving Constantinople and moving its headquarters to Jerusalem is a sign that probation for the world is about to be over, then that means probation on Adventists is really about to be over very soon, which means Sunday is about to be enforced any day. Because before probation on the world closes, Sunday has to be enforced, and this has to be a last day issue. Look what Haskell says. What's going on in Turkey is an indication of the movements going on with our great high priest and that probation on the world is about to be over. Let's look at his exact quote. Every eye is centered on that one spot and has been for years. And remember, we're told to watch. Turkey is known universally as the sick man of the East, meaning Eastern Europe, that portion in Constantinople. The time will come when he will remove from Constantinople and take up his abode in Palestine, that is, plant his tabernacle between the Mediterranean and Red Seas. Here, Stephen Haskell is quoting Daniel 11.45 verbatim, brothers and sisters. And this is from Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 247, paragraph 3. And we're going to continue in this book. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried, saying, Hurt not the earth, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. These angels now hold the winds of strife, waiting for the church of God to prepare for his coming. So there's a connection between the events of Turkey and the seal of God in Christ's coming. The sealing angel goes through Jerusalem, the church, to place the seal of the living God on the foreheads of the faithful. And while this work goes forward, Turkey stands as a national guidepost to the world that men may know what is going on in the sanctuary above. Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 248, paragraph 1, continuing on to paragraph 2. God's eye is upon his people, and he never leaves himself without a witness in the world. No man knows when Turkey will take its departure from Europe, but when that move is made, earth's history will be short. Then it will be said, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Today is the day of preparation. While the world watches Turkey, let the servant of God watch the movements of his great high priest, whose ministry for sin is almost over. Brothers and sisters, here we're told to watch this event. This is how we're not going to allow Christ to come as a thief in the night to us and to the world. Specifically to the world when we share this with them in the last days. He's connecting the events of Turkey when Turkey leaves Constantinople in the eastern part of Europe and moves its headquarters to Jerusalem. Then, right after that happens, very shortly, Christ leaves the most holy place. He'll stand up and leave the most holy place. And if you read Evangelism, page 111, paragraph 2, Sister White says, Haskell's Bible training school he did four years back, which was in 1902, was endorsed by God. If you read this book, Story of Daniel the Prophet, and you open the front cover, the first page tells us that this book is from his Bible training school that he did back then. Also, RY 124, paragraph 1 to 2, is retirement years. And in there, we're counseled that Stephen Haskell and Loughborough both knew and understand every principle of our faith, and that they were right. So the answer to the question is an emphatic yes. Yes, this is of a salvational nature. And we need to make sure we have a correct understanding of those verses. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below this video. P.S. If the prophet says we need to understand the events in reference to the marshalling of the nations, and the eastern question is a part of this, then yes. It is for our own salvation that we know these things and have a correct understanding of them. For if we reject to study them out as we have been counseled by Jesus to do through the prophet, then we are disregarding what our Lord and Savior tells us. 
and then in itself is salvational and that in itself is salvational see second chronicles 20 verse 20 the last sentence says believe in the prophets and so shall you prosper by the way below is the powerpoint video series that is on youtube titled who is the king of the north part one is ellen white daniel and the revelation and the eastern question there's the link for it part two miller's rules and the correct understanding of the four horns of daniel eight brothers and sisters in order to understand daniel eleven you must understand the four horns of Daniel 8. There's the link for it. Part 3. Atheistic and Homosexual France, Turkey, and the Eastern Question. And there's the link for it. I'll be doing parts 4 through 6 of this very video series in the next three weeks. But these three parts are the gist of the topic of Daniel 11 verses 40 through 45. And Part 3 goes into details of the Eastern question. One last thing. There are some who are saying to give a flat out yes or no regarding this question as to whether or not this is salvational, but it's not that simple as you saw in this PowerPoint. And then they use the verse where Christ says, Let your nays be nay and your yeas be yea. Matthew 5, verses 34 through 37. What people need to understand is in those verses, Christ was referring to not swearing by heaven or the earth. He was not referring to the way it's being interpreted in regards to this question, whether or not this subject is salvational. For we see Christ answered questions with the question himself. And I'm going to read Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 26, and this is just one example and if, if Christ did it, then I can do it. To say this is wrong in doing this, answering a question with a question, is saying Christ was in error and wrong. Luke ten twenty five through 26 And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? So he didn't directly answer him. He answered the question with the question to cause them to think. And so I'm going to answer this question with the question. The question is, is this of a salvational nature? My question to the question is, are the events and the signs of the time that point and lead to the coming of Christ salvational, yes or no? I answer, yes, they are. So there's nothing wrong with doing this as some try to make it appear. The end. Once again, brothers and sisters, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below this video and I will respond at my earliest convenience. Thank you for joining us and watching this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.